Nan McKay and Associates has produced this video to be used in briefing clients on the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Use of this video is limited to authorized users who have purchased the video. Welcome to the Housing Choice Voucher Program from Nan McKay and Associates. Unauthorized use is subject to civil and criminal penalties. We are committed to ensuring full access to participation. If you need an accommodation for a disability in order to have full access to our services, please let us know. The Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program is designed to increase housing choice and provide rental assistance to eligible low-income families leasing decent, safe, affordable housing from private owners. The United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, provides funding and makes the rules and regulations for the voucher program. Your housing agency uses this HUD funding to pay part of the rent to the owner for eligible families. Your housing agency has determined that your family is eligible for the voucher program. This presentation has been designed to help you better understand how the program works. In addition to this video, your housing representative will also explain the housing agency's local policies and procedures you need to know. Your housing agency may also provide you with a copy of the family handbook. The success of the Housing Choice Voucher Program relies on the three-way partnership between the owner, the housing agency, and you. As partners, all three have important responsibilities to each other. To make the program work, all three partners must do their jobs. The housing agency's job is to determine the family's eligibility and issue a voucher, explain the program to families, approve the tenancy, pay assistance payments to the owner, and to make sure owners and families comply with program rules. The family's job is to provide all information requested by the housing agency, find suitable housing, take good care of the housing unit, abide by the lease, and comply with the family obligations of the voucher program and the housing agency's local policies. The owner's job is to screen families and determine the family's suitability as renters, comply with fair housing laws, make repairs to the unit, comply with the contract between the owner and the housing agency, collect the rent due by the family, and enforce the lease. You will get a briefing packet from the housing agency that contains information about the program, the forms you'll need to complete when you find a place you want to live, and your responsibilities after you have been admitted to the program. At a minimum, your briefing packet will contain the following items. A voucher, how long you have to find a unit and if your agency will extend your search time, how your subsidy is determined, the area in which you may look for a unit, an explanation of portability, the HUD tenancy addendum that must be included in your lease, a request for tenancy approval form, the housing agency's policy on adding an additional bedroom to your voucher, the HUD brochure on how to select a unit, a copy of the housing discrimination complaint form, a list of owners who may be willing to lease units to families, a notice that families including a person with disabilities may request a list of accessible units, the family obligations under the program, the grounds for which assistance can be terminated, and the housing agency's informal hearing procedures. If you or anyone in your family is a person with disabilities and you require a specific accommodation because of your disability in order to fully access our programs and services, please contact us. We will work together with you to be sure that your family has equal access to all of our housing programs and opportunities. Your voucher is the most important document in your briefing packet. It is the agreement between you and the housing agency and lists all of your responsibilities under the program. The unit size listed on your voucher refers to the number of bedrooms you receive subsidy for. It is based on your family size, HUD guidelines, and the housing agency's policies. These local policies are called subsidy standards. Your voucher is valid for at least 60 days. If your voucher expires before you find suitable housing, you will have to reapply and go back on the waiting list. That is why it is important that you find a suitable unit as quickly as possible. Check your briefing packet for a copy of the housing agency's policy to see if your agency will extend your search time.
It's up to you to decide where you want to live. You may look for a unit anywhere within the housing agency's jurisdiction. You may choose to continue living in your current unit as long as it qualifies under program rules. If you live in a high poverty neighborhood or area, you may want to consider searching for a housing unit in another area. Some of the advantages of moving to a low poverty area could be better employment and educational opportunities or being closer to community services. You may be able to use your assistance to move anywhere in the United States where there is a housing agency with a voucher program. The HUD term for this is portability. We will discuss portability later in this presentation. In your search for suitable housing, you'll want to choose a place that meets your family's needs. First, consider the outside of the unit and the neighborhood. Is there a safe place for your children to play? Is the area clean and well kept? Does it have a low crime rate? You may want to consider other factors like, which schools will your children attend? How close is the nearest grocery store? Is the area close to your workplace or your babysitter? Is public transportation available in the area? Does the area have adequate security features? In your briefing packet, you should find a list of property owners who accept vouchers. You are not limited to this list. You may also want to use the internet. Check the classified section of the newspaper or published apartment guides. Contact local real estate offices or rental agencies. Ask friends and neighbors. Or check community or supermarket bulletin boards. You may want to drive or walk through neighborhoods you like and look for for rent signs. In searching for the unit you want to rent, you must consider the voucher program requirements. First, the housing unit will have to pass inspection, so the condition of the unit you choose is important. Your briefing packet includes the HUD brochure that describes how to choose a unit that will pass inspection. It also includes a lead-based paint brochure. You may have to look at several units before you find one you want to rent and that qualifies for the program. When you meet with the owner to look at the unit, ask questions. What is the owner's maintenance policy? Will you be allowed to have pets? How much is the security deposit? Are any utilities included in the rent? Who supplies the stove and refrigerator? The owner has to be willing to lease to you and to participate in the voucher program. The owner's willingness to lease to you under the program depends on your suitability as a tenant. Most owners will have you complete an application and may check your credit and references along with tenancy history. Your briefing packet contains a statement of the housing agency's policy on providing information to prospective owners. If the owner is not familiar with the Section 8 voucher program, you may want to contact your housing agency representative to assist in explaining how the program works. Your housing agency may provide an owner's handbook or the agency may provide an owner briefing. When you choose the unit you want, you must request that the housing agency approve it by submitting the HUD form called the Request for Tenancy Approval and any other documents given by your agency. The packet should explain how these documents are to be submitted. In any case, the documents must be received by the housing agency before your voucher expires. The lease should not be signed when you submit your paperwork because the unit has to pass inspection. Once the agency approves the unit, they will tell you when you should sign the lease. When the housing agency receives your request for tenancy approval, they will schedule an inspection. The time needed to schedule the inspection may vary from agency to agency. Your housing representative can advise you of the procedures for scheduling inspections. It is in your best interest to be present at the inspection of the unit so you can see what repairs, if any, need to be made. If the unit doesn't pass inspection, the owner may be given time to make repairs and the unit may be re-inspected after repairs are completed. In addition to passing the inspection, the housing agency must ensure that the rent being charged by the owner is reasonable. The PHA will determine this by comparing the rent for the unit you have selected to rents charged for similar units that are not on the voucher program. When the tenancy is approved, you will sign a lease with the owner. Remember, the owner must agree to include the HUD required tenancy addendum in the lease. A copy of this addendum is in your briefing packet. After the lease is signed, the owner will sign a contract with the housing agency and the agency will begin paying the owner each month. The amount of rent you will pay to the owner each month is based on a percentage of your income and the rent for the unit you choose. Remember, the subsidy is credited against your rent and you must pay the difference. Failure to pay your share could result in eviction by the owner and a loss of your housing assistance. 
The housing agency is required to establish a payment standard for each bedroom size. This payment standard is the maximum amount the agency will pay the owner. If you choose a unit where the rent and utilities are below the payment standard, your share will be generally based on 30% of your income. However, if rent and utilities are more than the payment standard, you will be paying more than 30%. HUD does not allow families to pay more than 40% of their income towards rent and utilities. Your housing agency representative will provide you with more information about this affordability limit. There is also information about how your rent is calculated in your briefing packet. If you have questions about how your rent was determined, please be sure to ask your housing agency representative. Once the PHA has calculated the amount of your subsidy, the housing agency will notify both you and the owner of these amounts. After you move in, you will have to comply with the owner's lease, the voucher program requirements, and the housing agency's policies and procedures. About eight or nine months after your lease begins, you will receive a notice from the housing agency that it's time for your annual re-examination. At the time of your re-examination, you will be required to provide current and accurate information about who lives with you and the income of the people in your household. The housing agency will verify all of the information that you provide. If your household includes a student, the PHA may be required to count some financial assistance as income. In many situations, the PHA may also need to determine if a student's parents are income eligible, even though the student does not reside with the parent. It is important for you to be truthful because the housing agency will also compare the income information you provide to a database that has employment and social security records. The information gathered will then be used to determine your share of the rent for the upcoming year. Both you and the owner will be given a written notice before any change in your rent payment or the housing agency's payment to the owner goes into effect. Be sure to complete all re-examination requirements on time to avoid interruption of your housing assistance. You are also required to allow the housing agency to conduct a full inspection of your unit at least once a year. If you cannot be home for your inspection, be sure to make arrangements for an adult to be there to allow the inspector to enter the premises. This is a mandatory program requirement. If a family member moves out of the unit, you must report it to the housing agency immediately. If you are considering having someone move into your unit, you must first notify the housing agency because all household members must be approved by the housing agency before they can live in the unit. Make certain that you understand your housing agency's procedures for approval of additional household members. Your housing representative will explain the procedures to report changes in household income. You must report all changes of income as required by the housing agency. If the amount of your rent changes, both you and the owner will receive written notification of your new rent amount and the date it goes into effect. The owner may not increase your rent during the initial term of your lease. After the initial term, the owner may notify the housing agency of the decision to increase the rent. All rent increases must be approved by the housing agency. If the owner asks you to agree to any changes in the lease, Contact the housing agency to find out if the changes will require a new lease and contract. Also, you should be aware that federal law protects renters in foreclosed properties. Your housing authority should be able to provide you with more information on your rights should foreclosure affect your unit. If you decide you want to move to another unit and continue receiving housing assistance, you must give the owner proper written notice according to your lease, usually 30 days, but check your lease to be certain. You are also required to give a copy of the notice to the housing agency. Your housing representative will explain the housing agency's procedures for moving. If you are thinking about moving outside your housing agency's jurisdiction, talk to your housing agency representative. Your briefing packet should have information about how portability works. If your housing agency's representative approves your move, he or she will call the agency in the area to which you wish to move. You will be provided with the name and phone number of the person who you should contact in the new location. Your representative will inform you about any known procedures of the other agency since you will be subject to their rules, policies, and deadlines. The amount of rent you have to pay may be different and you may qualify for a different size voucher. It is very important that you contact the other housing agency right away. Your housing agency should send most of your paperwork to the other housing agency. Upon your arrival, the new agency may have you attend a briefing or an interview to re-verify your income. If you comply with their procedures, 
They will issue you a voucher and the necessary paperwork authorizing you to search for a unit in their area. The deadline for finding a unit is the expiration date of the voucher that the other agency issues. If you need more time, it's up to the other agency whether to extend it. Most likely, they will not extend it. Therefore, it is very important to get to the new location, find a unit, and turn in your paperwork before the expiration date of the voucher. If you decide not to lease in the new location, you must contact your original housing agency before your voucher expires. Portability sounds a little complicated, but the two agencies handle most of the paperwork. The most important thing to remember if you are approved to move under portability is to contact the other agency immediately and to make sure you follow their procedures. At the end of this briefing, you will sign your voucher. By doing so, you acknowledge your responsibilities and obligations while participating in the program. These family obligations are listed on your voucher, and they apply to all families on the program. There are two types of family obligations. The first type of obligation includes things you must do. Families are required to provide complete information about the citizenship and income of every person who will be living in the unit, including the verification of social security numbers. You must provide any information or documents that the housing agency determines to be necessary. You must notify the housing agency when someone moves out of the unit and request approval before allowing anyone to move into the unit. Families must sign any consent or release forms that are needed to verify eligibility. You have to take care of the units and not damage the unit beyond normal wear and tear. You are required to allow the housing authority to inspect the unit at reasonable times after reasonable notice. Once you are admitted to the program, you must live in the unit as your family's only place of residence. Families must provide any information requested by the housing agency to verify the family is living in the unit or relating to family absences. You are required to notify the housing agency and owner before moving out of the unit and you must give the housing agency a copy of any owner eviction notice. The second type of family obligation includes things you must not do. The family must not seriously or repeatedly violate the lease. Do not sublet or transfer the lease. Do not use illegal drugs or get involved in any other type of illegal drug-related activity. Do not commit any violent criminal acts. You must not abuse alcohol in a way that threatens the health, safety, or right to peaceful enjoyment of the premises by other residents. When you give the housing agency information, don't leave out anything that could have an effect on the amount of rent you pay. Information you provide must be true and complete. One of the most common program violations is allowing someone who is not on the lease to live in the unit. If you permit anyone who has not been approved by the housing agency to live in the unit, it is a violation of your family obligation and it could result in the loss of your housing assistance. Ask your housing agency about the maximum length of time your guests are allowed to stay and be sure to contact the agency for approval requirements before allowing someone to move into your unit. Renting a room or subleasing the unit is a violation of a family obligation. The unit is approved for your family only. Drug-related and violent criminal activity are serious violations of a family obligation. Every housing agency has standards for terminating assistance based on such abuses. Certain behaviors such as current drug use and alcohol abuse that threaten the health, safety, and right to peaceful enjoyment of the premises by other residents can be cause for termination of assistance as well. In addition to these termination options, the housing agency is required to terminate your assistance if any member of your household is or has been convicted of drug-related criminal activity for the production or manufacture of methamphetamine on the premises of federally assisted housing. Whenever you are interviewed by your housing agency, you'll be asked to report all income received by everyone in your household. If you don't report all of your household income, it causes the housing agency to pay more money to the owner than the law requires. And of course, failing to report income is a violation of your family obligations. Making false statements and providing false information are serious violations of program rules, as well as violations of state and federal criminal laws. If families provide false information or documents, they may have to repay money to the housing agency, they can lose their assistance, and they may be prosecuted. If you're not sure about any of your responsibilities or family obligations, ask your housing agency representative. If you know of someone who is violating program rules, please report it to your housing agency representative. In your dealings with the PHA and with owners, be aware of your rights under federal non-discrimination laws. 
These laws prohibit you from being treated differently because of your age, religion, gender, disability, color, race, national origin, or because you have children. Some states or local areas may have additional non-discrimination laws that establish other protected classes. The Violence Against Women Act, known as VAWA, also offers protections for anyone, regardless of gender, who has been a victim of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, or stalking. If you've been a victim, check with the PHA to see if they have any activities, services, or programs to help you. VAWA also prohibits PHAs and owners from considering actual or threatened domestic violence, dating violence, or stalking as a cause for terminating the tenancy, occupancy, or program assistance of the victim. This means that PHAs and owners can't consider such violence or stalking as a serious or repeated violation of the lease by the victim or as criminal activity or other good cause for terminating the tenancy of the victim. Of course, these protections do not extend to the perpetrator of the domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, or stalking. All federal non-discrimination laws, including VAWA, have been put in place to ensure that fair housing is everyone's right. If you feel you have been denied your housing rights due to unlawful discrimination, you can file a housing discrimination complaint to help resolve the issue. You can do this in a number of ways. One of the easiest ways to file a complaint is through HUD. HUD offers several different options for filing a fair housing complaint. One option is to complete the housing discrimination complaint form found in your briefing packet and return it to the appropriate HUD office listed on that complaint form. You can find additional copies of this HUD fair housing complaint form by going to HUD's website at www.hud.gov and clicking on the fair housing links. On HUD's website, you will also find additional ways to file fair housing complaints, including over the phone using a toll-free number and over the internet using an electronic form. For more information about your fair housing rights or to file a complaint, visit HUD's website or call the toll-free number on the HUD fair housing complaint form in your packet. In addition to filing a complaint with HUD or as an alternative, you may contact a state or local agency specializing in fair housing issues in your community for help in filing a fair housing complaint. Legal aid and disability rights groups often help qualified individuals file fair housing complaints through the local court system as well. It's important that you and your family understand and honor your family obligations under the voucher. If your family fails to abide by these family obligations, your assistance may be terminated and you may not be eligible for future assistance. Housing assistance is a privilege and should not be abused. If you're not sure about the rules and procedures, contact your housing agency to get the correct information. No one should be evicted or lose their assistance unnecessarily. Your family obligations and rules of the program are included in your briefing packet. Keep all of the program literature you have been provided in a safe place with your lease so you can refer to them in the future. Information and cooperation are the key ingredients to achieve success in the voucher program. The information you have received today will help you succeed in choosing safe, decent housing in the community that is best for your family. You are about to become one of the more than 1 million families who have been served by the Section 8 program. If you choose to follow the program rules, you will be able to increase your housing choices at a price you can afford. You'll be able to choose the neighborhood you want to live in and the type of housing that's best for your family with the features that are most important to you.